what's up everybody welcome back to unparalleled universe for another action figure review and today we're taking a look at another character that i don't know anything about what we have here is the gm toys 112 scale reaper and this guy is based on a character that goes by the name of hunk from resident evil and just like Leon Kennedy, before getting the figure, I really didn't know too much about the character. But with this guy, I went ahead and did some research, I did some homework, and I think I have a good grasp of what the character is all about. It kind of reminds me of like Wolverine or even like Boba Fett or one of those type of like mysterious characters that you really don't know too much about. They don't show up very often, but when they do, they make an impression and they're just badass, you know. And then, you know, like eventually <laughs> the companies that own these characters characters can't help themselves they end up like exploring the backstory too much and then they ruin the characters um it sounds like the the fandom behind this guy definitely wants to prevent that because you know i was reading through a bunch of comments and all kinds of different things and most people were like oh i loved playing as hunk in this game or that game or whatever but i never want to see him in his own game because it would be too much and it would take away from the mysterious element and yeah i think that's that's true sometimes it's cool to keep things a mystery but anyways let's go ahead and get into this huge shout out to the folks over at 5k toys for sending this out to me to review you guys have been awesome i'll leave a link to their store in the description below so be sure to check them out also check them out on instagram their page is awesome but anyways starting off with the packaging i think this looks amazing we have a really cool shot of the figure itself over here it says 112 proportion down here it says the reaper and all that on the side of the box it says gm toys 112 action figure for custom okay on the back there's a bunch of information over here same thing thing is the opposite side uh, but yeah this is a cool looking box i love the action figure photography here on the front that is really dope looks like something right out of the game it definitely like you know accurately conveys the tone and feel of the character so that's dope i love the lighting in the background that's a cool shot and the box is nice it's not too big doesn't take up too much space you could keep it around store the accessories in there and all that good stuff but yeah enough about the pretty box let's go ahead and get the reaper out and take a look all right, so here we have the Reaper, a.k.a. Dr. Death, a.k.a. Hunk, also known as Human Unit Never Killed, right out of the box. And as you can see, this guy turned out really, really dope. This is my first experience with GM Toys, and I've got to say, I am really impressed with what we have going on here. Everything is really well done. He's got some nice soft goods. He's got like a lot of cool sculpted pouches and things like that. And even with all this stuff all over the body, the articulation is really good, you know? It's very functional. He's fun to pose around. And yeah, man, it's just a really great figure. And from what I've learned about this character, you know, he, he's the type of character that like doesn't say much. He just kind of shows up, handles business. He's the one that you send into situations that you need like you need it to be you need the mission to be accomplished you need things to go perfect and you need like someone who who's not going to get too like emotional about anything you know he's going to go in there <laughs> kill whatever he has to kill do whatever he has to do get whatever he has to get and he's gonna make it happen and i think this figure definitely personifies that very cold nature of the character you know when you look at it it's just like man like what's behind the mask you know like damn <laughs> it's kind of scary you know it's very cool. I love characters with gas masks. I think that's like a, a very cool design. And then taking a close look at the details, starting off at the head, I really like the way this looks. The mask and the helmet setup looks awesome to me. It reminds me of Star-Lord, which I like quite a bit. <laughs> you can see right here on the face, we have like the ventilation system with the filters and stuff. That looks really cool. And I love the red eyes. I like how they gave the the mask like red lenses for the eye area that is so dope and the red kind of stands out on the you know on the uh dark colors of the mask so it looks really dope and there's a little bit of a shine to it too you can see that my lights are reflecting in the lenses and i like how you can't really see through them you know it kind of adds to the mysterious nature of the character so that's awesome and then we do have some like straps connecting the mask to the helmet it's all sculpted together there and the helmet itself has some, you know, rivets and other shapes sculpted on there. So yeah, that's awesome, man. This is a cool looking head sculpt. And then moving down into the body here, as you can see, we have some really nice looking soft goods. He's got like his jumpsuit and then there's like a vest underneath all the pouches here. So that all looks good. We have some uh, patches on the arm here and then the elbow pads are removable. If you'd like to take those off, you probably can, but you know, there's no need, but they are a separate piece. 
And yeah, look at the sculpting work on these uh, pouches, man. This all looks really good. And I love the green color on there too. That is very dope. And then when we go around to the back here, we have his walkie-talkie that is removable. You could take it out of that little section there. We have some more uh, pouches around the waistline. Ooh, and then on the side we have uh, his gun holster. And it's kind of hard to get his gun in and out of the holster. You have to kind of angle it and whatever. I'm not going to try to mess with it too much there. But yeah, you have to angle it because like there's this strap that covers the top and that really doesn't move. So you have to angle it to get the gun in and out of there. And then right here we do have a flashlight. Right there, so that's nice. The pouches look good belt buckle here and then moving down to the legs you can see that the straps right here look really nice they're very tight on there they don't like sag or look bad or anything so yeah this looks really good I like how the knee pads have some detailing on them they look really dope and then moving down to the feet here you can see we like you can see that we have a little bit of grime on the toe area you know so yeah man this is a really great looking figure I think that GM Toys really did a great job with all the little details and the sculpting work, and they really brought this crazy looking character to life, man. This is awesome. I love the way he looks. All right, so now for accessories. The Reaper comes with a bunch of good stuff, including several sets of hands. So first off, we have a pair of fists, and then he does come with a set of partially open hands. You could use these to, you know, like cradle the gun or something like that. They're not all the way open or relaxed, but yeah, they're open enough to definitely get some different types of uses out of them. And then next up, we have a set of tight gripping hands. These can be used to hold on to the smaller items like the flashlight or the knife or whatever. And then lastly, of course, he gets a set of gun gripping hands. And I like that he came with all these different sets of hands, but I will say they are kind of hard to swap on and off of the figure because, I don't know, it's just kind of a, of a tight peg hole in there. So you definitely want to heat the hands up before uh, you know getting too crazy with it and then he does come with this really cool looking briefcase as you can see here we have the umbrella corporation logo on there on the back we have some type of hazard sign and yeah this looks really cool we have a key pad on the top with a digital screen i like the metallic look and the coolest thing about it is that you could open it up and then we have a couple of virus samples in there what is it, the T-Virus and the G-Virus? Uh, it would have been cool, uh, Billy Moon mentioned this to me, shout out to Billy Moon, he said it would have been cool if the vials were different colors to represent the two different viruses. I think that would have been dope, but as it is, these are pretty cool. Oops, dropped one there, but as you could see, you are able to take these out and they're just held in there by uh, you know this foam material. So yeah, this is really cool. And they stay in there with no problem at all. Check that out. Boom. And then he does come with a few different guns. Here's the first one here. As you can see, we get a handgun. And this looks really nice. Check out the details on that. I love the silver color with the black grip. I think this came out awesome. I'm not 100% sure what type of gun this is. Or, you know, obviously it's some kind of handgun. But I don't know the name of it. I would say it's probably like a Desert Eagle or something. Let me know in the comments. But... Yeah, this does look really nice and he could hold on to it very well. And yeah, that's a badass gun for sure. And then he does come with the shotgun and this looks really good too. This is probably my favorite weapon that he comes with. I think they did a good job on this and it does have the pump action. Like I said before, I'm not much of a gun guy so I don't know all the official names of all these weapons but you know, in my ignorance, I would just call this a machine gun <laughs> or some type of machine gun. I'm sure that's way off. Feel free to correct me in the comments, but yeah, this looks really good. It has like a strap so that you can like, you know, drape it on him so it's hanging from him. And also you have this piece here that comes in like that. So yeah, this looks good. We got the scope on the top. And then next up, we have a flashlight. And it's funny because in my Leon review, I mentioned that I didn't have any 112 scale flashlights. And now I have two and they both come from Resident Evil characters. <laughs> but yeah, this looks pretty good. I like how they put a chrome effect on the inside of the lens. So you could kind of, you know, get some reflection going and maybe, you know, if you could shine some light in there, maybe you could make it look like the flashlight is turned on. So that's cool. And then over here we do get a knife and the knife looks really good. But the funny thing about the knife is that it comes with a knife sheath. But I cannot figure out where this goes. Like it has this weird little peg that's super small. It's not like long enough to peg into anything. 
and I just can't find anywhere on the figure where there's like a little tiny hole that it would plug into, you know? It's weird. <laughs> but I like that he comes with a knife. That is cool. But it would be cool if the sheath was able to go onto the figure somewhere. I don't know. That's kind of an idea, right? But yeah, I can't find anywhere where it's where it's supposed to go. It's kind of weird. And then he does come with one extra head sculpt in addition to the one that we've already looked at. And this one here is very similar to that other one. The only difference is that it has the eye knocked out of the mask. And I think that's so awesome. It's such a small little detail that you could that you can add to really change the whole vibe of the character and the figure itself, you know? Because <laughs> when he has his regular helmet and mask on that doesn't have the eye popped out, you know, he just kind of feels like a like a like a monster almost or like a robot or something kind of like inhuman but once you see this right here it adds humanity to it and it kind of reminds you that this dude is kind of it's a person you know it's not some like monster out there and it adds a whole lot of depth to the character and to the figure you know i think that's a really cool effect and they actually killed it on that one little detail like check out check out the eye it looks so good they really did a great job with that <laughs> It's funny, like, just focusing on this one eye, but yeah, really cool, man. That looks so good, and I like the broken glass still still kind of, like, on the mask there. That is so dope. Look at that. It's like, inhuman monster? No, I'm a man, please. But yeah, that looks good. Alrighty, so now for some size comparisons. Here we have Hunk alongside the Patriot Studios Leon Kennedy and the Patriot Studios Zombie Cop. And I think they all look really good together. I think the styles blend together nicely and they could definitely work with each other. I will say though, Hunk seems to be a little bit on the short side compared to Leon Kennedy. I don't know if that's accurate to the game, but yeah, look, when you have them close to each other, Leon definitely looks like a much taller guy. So I don't know if that's like accurate to the game or anything like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Hunk does look a little bit on the short side. He doesn't look out of scale. He just looks like a shorter guy compared to Leon. But I still think they look really good together. And I can't wait to see what people do with all these high-quality Resident Evil figures, you know? Like, I'm sure Resident Evil fans never thought that they'd see figures like this for a franchise that they like. But, yeah, man, these different companies are killing it. And I like that they all fit together so well. Some and if you want some zombie crossover action, here we have Hunk alongside the G.I. Joe Classified Mole Rat and the Marvel Legends Zombie Captain America. And man, I really need to get some more zombies. <laughs> I wish there were just more random zombies out there. And then here we have Hunk alongside the Mezco 112 Collective Orlock and the Mezco 112 Collective Morbius. And then for some video game action, here we have him alongside the Figma Link and the Jada Toys Fei Long. Next up, we have Hunk alongside the Aton studios uh mr knight is that what it's called i can't remember not a toys aton something like that but i love this mr knight figure i often forget about it you know i have him like in the back of a like a dark shelf he just kind of hangs out back there every now and then i pick it up and i go damn this thing was incredible but yeah love that figure on the opposite side we have the mezco 112 collective blade and you know what? This hunk figure really reminds me of these damn toys swap figures. I bought these, you know, a couple of years ago and I never had like played with a damn toys figure at that point. But I picked these up just randomly at a toy show and I freaking love them. I use them all the time. I've gotten so much use for these guys in photos with other characters that, you know, I'm so happy that I have them. I wish I would have picked up more when they were around, but I haven't seen them in a while. But I think they look really good next to Hunk. He could definitely serve as the leader of a little SWAT crew featuring these guys. I think they work together really well. So yeah, this is dope right here. And then of last, but of course not least, here we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and the Marvel Legends Renew Your Vows Spider-Man. And the articulation on this guy is pretty nice, especially considering that he's mostly covered up. I do feel like they left enough space in certain areas to get some good range out of the joints. So I'm definitely having fun playing around with it. But let's see what we have going on starting off at the head. He does have movement at the upper neck. And it does seem like the neck itself is a separate piece from the torso, but I don't think there's like an actual ball joint in there. I mean, there's a little bit of movement, it looks like, but not a whole lot. It does swivel, like the neck swivels around, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they have going on in there, but it is kind of limited. But the head itself gets some good range. As you can see, we have some nice tilting action. He could look up to about right there. Oh yeah, you could see the neck is moving a little, but he could look up to about right there. Then he could look down to right there. And then, obviously, side to side. And then for the torso, he does have like a, 
seems like a ball joint at the waist and a diaphragm cut and using both of those you get some pretty good range especially like look at this is all covered by pouches and a vest and the soft goods but it still gets some nice movement look at that yeah that's that's awesome right there goes forward to about right there using both of those joints yeah that's that's good to me I'm happy with that and then doesn't go back so much because all these things kind of collide with each other back here so it's only gonna go back to about right there and then he can twist on there as well so yeah the the movement in the torso is really impressive and then for the arms he's able to get his arms up in front of him like this obviously it's a little tight because of the soft goods but the fact that you could get both up like this is pretty good and there is some type of like butterfly joint in there although there's not a whole lot of movement on it you could see that there's something going on and then he does have ball joints at the shoulders so yeah like I said it could go forward and back a pretty decent amount and then you could get his arms out to the side to about right there yeah so again you know all this is covered up but they did a good job at allowing enough uh, range on these joints like they left enough space in the in the soft goods to make it to make it good you know so yeah I'm happy with that and then he does have upper bicep swivel he's got a nice double jointed elbow that bends to right there even though he does have the elbow pad with the straps that kind of go on the inside of the elbow it still doesn't really restrict the movement at all so pretty good stuff there He could definitely didn't he I think uh, I read somewhere that he came up with a certain like fighting style or something specific specifically intended to kill zombies or to fight zombies hand to hand or something like that let me know in the comments uh, but yeah I think it's pretty important that he's able to get into like decent fighting poses and it looks like he can you know his arms can get in front of him a pretty decent amount little restricted but yeah not too bad and then for the hands he does have a ball joint at the wrist that has a hinge in it so it can go up and down like that swivel around all that good stuff and then the hand can swivel itself so pretty good stuff on the upper body and then for the legs let's see what we have he can kick forward oh look at that damn he could kick forward to right there kick to the side kick to the side a pretty good amount again the pants don't really restrict the movement at all kick forward in case he needs to like kick kick a door down boom pretty good movement on the legs and then he does have upper thigh swivel in there he has double jointed knees that just like the elbows get a really good bend look at that that's crazy and the knee pads have the same situation as the elbow pads where like there's straps that go on the inside of the knee but they really don't hinder the articulation at all and then for the foot he does so it's kind of weird what we have going on here he's got a boot that covers most of the joint and when you look at it it kind of seems like there's no movement in the in the foot area but there is so it can swivel side to side and there is some type of hinged ball joint in there so you have to make sure that it's pointing the right way so like on each foot I have them pointing in, in different directions so like for this one it's pointed so that you can bring his foot forward to like that you know and it's not a whole lot but it's pretty good considering the boot is one piece they made it to where the top of the boot is pretty soft so you can still get a little bit of movement out of the foot I would be careful you know since you can't see what's in there don't like push things too crazy but I just want to kind of show you guys that there's a little bit of movement in there and then on this side I have the ball joint kind of the opposite way I think I don't know what the hell I'm talking about but it seems like the joint is <laughs> in a different direction in there and as you can see we get a little bit of ankle rocker so there's movement in the foot area but I would definitely be careful since you can't really see what's going on or maybe like pop the foot off and and check out what's going on in there so you could get a good sense of how you can move it but there is some type of movement in the foot which is nice to see because I assumed there was going to be no movement at all so there's a little bit of something going on in there 
I'm gonna have to pop it out and see. You may not even be able to see if you pop it out. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Maybe it's like a just like a forward-facing pin deal and a ball joint or something. But yeah, there's there's movement. See? But yeah, pretty good articulation on this guy. He's mostly covered up, and you'd think that like the articulation would be restricted. And it kind of is, but you could still definitely pose him up a lot. You could get him into cool poses, fighting poses, uh, you know, whatever you need. I think they did a good job of making sure that the articulation was still pretty functional, even though most of it is covered. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount of range that he has on his joints and just how fun he is to play with. So I'm very happy with the articulation. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this is a really, really dope figure. Like I said at the beginning, this is my first experience with GM Toys, and I've got to say, man, I'm really impressed with what we have going on here. Yeah, man, this guy came out awesome. I really love the character design, and I think that GM Toys did a great job of capturing like that Stone Cold Killer vibe that this guy has. They really did a great job with the soft goods. Obviously, you know, it's not like the most complex design for the soft goods. It's basically just the jumpsuit and then, you know, things added on. But what I love about it is that the soft goods look real natural on the figure. They're very well tailored, but then at the same time, you know, there's enough bagginess and enough give in certain areas to where you could actually utilize the articulation to almost its full potential. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to do everything that the body underneath could do because of the soft goods, but for the most part, you're able to get him into any type of poses that you'd want for this type of character. So I really think they did a great job of balancing the soft goods and the articulation. And they did some nice work on the sculpted parts too. So I think they did a great job there. The accessories are nice too. It's nice to get a bunch of different weapons and extra hands. And you know, I love the briefcase that he comes with with the different viruses in there. I think that's so cool. But my favorite accessory is the alternate head with the broken uh, you know, eyeglass. I think that's so cool because when you see the figure, he definitely feels like inhuman almost, just like a, a robot or like some kind of like just, you know, heartless monster. But then when you see that broken glass, it kind of adds some humanity to the figure. I mean, to the character. But uh, yeah, I think they did a great job with that. Um, that little detail in that head sculpt, that one little difference brings so much to the vibe of the whole thing that I think that's awesome. So yeah, man, I love that broken eyeglass piece. I love the viruses, the weapons, all that stuff. So yeah, the accessories are really nice. And man, just in general, I think they killed it. As far as like flaws, I, I can't really think of anything that jumps out to me. The only thing that I thought was kind of weird was that the knife sheath doesn't really have anywhere to go. So I wish that was different. But aside from that, I really don't have any issues with this figure. Oh, and another thing, I will say the hands and the heads are kind of hard to switch out. You do want to warm things up a little bit to make to make st the plastic a little soft. Once you do that, it's kind of easy. But yeah, right out of the box, it was a little, you know, it's kind of making me nervous pulling on the hand here. So I went ahead and warmed it up. So I do wish that it was easier to swap out the parts. But yeah, aside from those two minor things, I'm super happy with this guy. And I'm just impressed with GM Toys. I'm gonna have to check out some more of their stuff. Let me know in the comments if there's any other GM Toys I should look at because they killed it on this guy and I wanna, I really wanna see what else, they, what else they've done, you know? And yeah, you, you gotta be going crazy if you're a Resident Evil fan because these companies are just killing it. Like these third party companies are just killing it with some of the like coolest characters they're going all out like th these are like <laughs> if i was like a huge fan of hunk or leon i couldn't imagine like like wanting more out of a figure than what's been provided with these guys you know so yeah the these these companies are straight up killing it but yeah before i get out of here i want to give a huge thank you to 5k toys for sending this out to me to take a look at uh, the 5k toys has been awesome i'll leave a link to their store and their instagram in the description below so be sure to check them out they sell all kinds of really cool stuff out of the box figures from different companies and you know everything that i purchase from there it, it's always kind of like a like an adventure for me because i'll buy something from there that i'm not familiar with and then i get it and i'm just like blown away because some of these companies are just like killing it and they're companies i've never heard of that's <laughs> that's the cool thing so you kind of never know what you're going to get but for the most part I've been extremely happy with the things that I purchased from 5K Toys, and they're just awesome to deal with. 
But man, as far as this guy goes, I think GM Toys absolutely killed it. Let me know in the comments if you're a big fan of Hunk, what you think of this figure. I want to get some feedback from actual fans of the character, you know? I'm, I'm curious if someone's going to come along and go, nah, this looks nothing like Hunk, or like he should be way bigger, or whatever, you know, who knows? But I'm curious to hear some of that feedback. For me, based on what little I've learned about the character, I feel like this figure personifies it perfectly. So yeah, they killed it. But anyways, with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace.